So in part one of this series, I went over how important it is for every business to realize the importance and the danger of ignoring the digital revolution in order to put us in the proper state of mind to think about the digital transformation. So if you didn't watch that video yet, I'll leave the, the, the link in the description box. I recommend that you watch that video first. My name is Osama Arouz. I transform businesses for the digital age. Welcome to my tech zone. So what is the digital transformation? It's transforming the business to meet the demands of the digital revolution. So what is the digital revolution then? It's the fourth industrial revolution. So in order to kind of clarify this first, we need to go to a quick history run of the four industrial revolution, the digital revolution being the fourth. So what is the history of the industrial revolution then? So the world before the 18th century, the economy of the world was was agrarian economy. It's based on farming and handicraft uh, products. And on the 18th century, the steam engine came. I'll call that the steam revolution. And from there, the steam engine drove manufacturing, drove trains, and things start changing. We start to see some manufacturing happening, some more influence and impact on the supply chain because now we have a train that can uh, transport products to uh, further distances that affected the consumer and trade and a lot of a host of, of changes in society came about because of the steam engine. And then in 19th century, all the way to the end of the 19th century, electricity came about and that is the second industrial revolution, that's the electric revolution. So the light bulb came, the appliances from there, and manufacturing started to be powered by electricity, which sustained longer hour productions. And then from there, the birth of mass production came about. And also around the same time, uh, lightweight uh, metals and plastic uh, came about and then changed the face of uh, the, the manufacturing and factories and heavy machinery started to come out and a whole the, the, kind of the revolution in the manufacturing industry happened during this time, which affected products, services, jobs, economy, uh, all kind of, of things changed from there. And then in the 20th century, to the end of the 20th century, we are looking at the computer revolution, and that's the electronics revolution. So computer came and computer started with some computing and math and expanded and expanded and expanded until an, an e-commerce came about and all the way until it became part of everyone's life. It's cell phones and TVs, smart TVs, all of that started to emerge and develop throughout the, uh, the 20th century until the 21st century and now we are now in the early stages of the fourth industrial revolution that's the digital uh, uh, revolution which is the data revolution and we will see there is uh, a pattern here is one revolution paves the way for the next revolution so the steam engine started manufacturing and then electricity came and electricity enhanced manufacturing and paved the way for the emergence of computers. And computers came, enhanced manufacturing also, enhanced a lot of things, enhanced the lifestyles of people and entertainment and, and doing business everywhere. And during that time, during the third industrial revolution with the use of computers and e-commerce and taking data, digitizing data, uh, and creating these digital files, di digital repository of information. Now we end up with a ton of information. That's the big wave or the big data wave in the, uh, the, the late 20th century. And from there, now we have a ton of data. Let's make use of this data. And here comes the digital revolution. That's the data revolution. The fourth industrial revolution is the data revolution, is how we're using data 
to enhance services, to enhance the user and customer experience, to enhance the products, to enhance decision making. Everywhere now, computers are there. Computers are uh, kind of the ubiquitous basic uh, utility. But the use of data now is the uh, competitive advantages that comes from there. We are in, in, in the really early stages of the digital revolution. We are looking at the digital revolution now uh, in, in, in light of history as the early days of appliances in the electric revolution where they had a washing machine, this huge washing machine outside it's like five by seven feet big and they run uh, they ran a wire to a light bulb socket there was no electric plug there was no outlets and there was no on and off switch all this came later on so we are in the in the in light of the digital revolution in the use of data at that time when the washing machine run f f uh, ran from the uh, electric socket. We're in really early stage. We don't know what will happen in a few years in the use of data, what other services will emerge from there, what other inventions of the use of data, and whether this will, will expand or a fifth revolution will come about based on the use of data for something else. But for businesses, what we care about at this moment is to prepare and jump on a train that is now with all the changes that are happening quickly, I might add. So the, the word digital is a bit uh, confusing because it's being used, actively being used, in two different ways. One to refer to the opposite of analog. So we'll look at a piece of paper that's an analog piece of information and then we, when we turn that into a PDF, that's a digital file. So paper file, digital file. But the context of the digital revolution goes beyond just a non-analog concept. It's the data. It's the data revolution. It's the digital revolution. It's the revolution of data that affects everything. Uh, in the workplace and in, in our consumer life. So for any business to go through the digital revolution has to pass through the digitization phase, becoming non-analog business. No piece of information should be sitting on a piece of paper anywhere because that piece of paper is not being used in the digital revolution way. So that's the first step, digitization, which should have happened in the previous century, in the 20th century, in the electronics, in the computer age. And any business that is interested in going through and jumping on the train, the first thing to do is become non-analog business, to move your data into a digital form, hence the digitization process. And then now you have all your data in digital form, preferably some parsable form like databases and spreadsheets, etc. Now you have data of your customers, of your inventory, of your history of, of purchasing and transactions everywhere. You take that and make use of it in the core process of the digital revolution, which is making use of data. That's digitalization of your business. And how you make use of data. There are various steps in between in where the digitalization process happens. How much you are using the data. Are you using the data to know how or when you should order? Things like Kind of some some intuitive example that uh, experienced business owners did with that before the age of computers, which uh, the holiday season is coming, so I better stock on certain products because that's the time when people will buy that. It's Thanksgiving, so let's uh, grocery stores stock uh, turkeys and 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 stuffings. 
It's very intuitive, very very simple example, but that's because the person or the society or everyone at that now knows that people consumption of turkey and stuffing increases in Thanksgiving, so that's a good time for businesses who service that type of food stock and be ready for the spike in sales. So it's very simple. But from there, the granular examples that can come out when you have the data that someone can analyze the data and look at it and see, well, this as an example, or who is our customers? Who, where do our customer live? Customers live? At what time of the day they really order online? How much we order? You can start to analyze the operation of the business as far as how much we order, when we order, who should we order from. Uh, and then see how much sales we're doing. Are we going forward? Are we increasing in our custom? A lot of analytics, and that's the basic, and that's kind of the early stages of, of, of using, using the data, was to, to look at the health of the organization as far as sales, as far as inventory, and from there evolve to a higher, more complicated use of data and analyzing the data and visualization of the data in charts and so on. So you, you move from there to a more sophisticated level beyond just charts and, and, and what happens when and all that to enhancing the user experience. Now, you go to Netflix, for example. Um, Netflix knows what shows you watched, what genre you favor, so the recommendations change for you, different from someone else watching different genre, different from different age. Uh, you go to Amazon, that's kind of the more scary example. Your purchasing history will affect your journey on Amazon. Every little thing that shows up knows you, knows your history, knows your browsing history, knows what items you looked at even if you didn't purchase them how long you've been searching what search items you were looking for on Amazon and all of that builds a profile for you as a consumer and then starts everything on, on, on the Amazon website starts to cater to you so it feels like you know, there is a there's a um, concierge there assisting you to find what you're looking for and advising you or recommending things that it appeals to you and so on that's in the in the e-commerce business that's kind of the the ones who took the torch of digital uh, uh, transformation to the next level and then everyone else is catching up to that and from there and and with this example in the personalization of the user experience every user has a, an experience that feels like it's made for them and that happens with the technology and the artificial intelligence and machine learning it, machine learning what is the machine is learning it's learning about you by all the data is collecting to figure your profile to know what to do with you as you're browsing the site as you're engaging with the service so it provides something that's that's relevant to you rather than uh, um, you feel like that's not for me and from there or kind of two two steps that kind of intermingle together that's uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and automation and automation here is not the robotics of them of the machinery even though it's kind of uh, is related to it in, in a way but the automation in the processes and automation in the user creating the user experience on the fly for example if you um, now in many websites the chat bot on the side is is, a, is an artificial intelligence it's an automation that has a, a database of questions and answers and then as you chat with that machine there's no one there really it's a bot and 
it, it will figure out what you're ask, what you're looking for and try to find the answers for you. Kind of a more advanced version of Google search. And it does it in a way that it's more uh, human like even though you, you it's not trying to deceive you, it knows that you're uh, I mean you know it's a, it's a bot. And even companies now are working on more AI uh, software where you pick up the phone instead of get this ugly uh, recorded voice it says hit one, hit two, th our menu has changed all that old stuff, you will find someone is actually talking to you. You you know, and, and, and at one point in the, in the near future, you will not know whether you are talking to a real person or, or a machine because of the enhancement in voice uh, recognition, knows w w what you're saying, it takes that and turns into a, a query and it looks for it and comes back with an answer and then have a, a, a digital voice that is human-like to respond to you. And that happens so fast because of the computing power that, uh, that it happens so quickly. And that's a, quite an advanced place for companies to be. And small businesses, um, there are services, there are solutions that kind of dip your toe in that area with a very uh, small investment to be able to, to do that. But the low-hanging fruit really for everyone is a digitization to change from analog to digital that's a given that's actually a late step but it's necessary and, and fu fundamental to to moving forward and then the bulk of the digital revolution is how to use the data how to make the data work for you if you have questions please leave them in the comments or send me an email directly uh, using the link in the description. So now that we know what the digital transformation is, generally speaking, that is, so how do we act on that? In the next video, I will go over how to evaluate your company in light of the digital transformation in order to know where to move from there. I hope you got a great value out of this video. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and activate the notification button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I'll see you in my next video.